Hi, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces. Now I know lots of you have got trips planned this year, including me. So today is all the things you need to know if you're going to Japan in 2023. All the things that have changed since 2020. The first half is going to be practical things like Visit Japan Web and changes to the JR Pass. And then the second half is going to be new things that have opened up and new places to go. I have mentioned some of these things in previous videos, but I've still been getting lots of questions about them. So I thought I'd just bring everything together in one place in case you've missed anything. And remember, there's lots of help with planning your trip, booking everything and loads of ideas for places to go in my Japan travel guidebook. You can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk. So first things first, the practical things. Someone asked me recently, is Japan actually open? And it might be hard to believe after waiting for so long, but yes, Japan is finally open for tourists. Currently, the requirement is you have to have had three doses of an approved vaccination or you have to take a test before you fly. And at the moment, everyone coming from China has to take a test before flying. I think that includes if you change flights in China. So be careful with that if you're not flying direct and you're changing flights in China. That's the situation today. Of course, it might change in the future. And as always, if you say something in a YouTube video, it's bound to change the next week. So you can check the current guidelines on Japan's Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare. They're the people that make the rules so you can't get more reliable than that. And your airline should also have up-to-date information about the current rules. Next, Visit Japan Web is the new system for quarantine, immigration and customs. You fill in your details online, upload your proof of vaccination and it gives you QR codes to scan when you arrive at the airport in Japan. It's much quicker and easier than providing all the information manually and having hard copies of all the documentation they need. And from what I've heard, it has been working pretty smoothly. Of course, I will update you on how it goes when I try it out when I go to Japan, which is coming up soon. You can find Visit Japan Web at vjw-lp.digital.go.jp. I don't know why they didn't give it a more memorable website URL. Or you can just search for Visit Japan Web. This page might come up first and it's got a link to Visit Japan Web. Here's what it looks like. Next, we've got some updates to the Japan Rail Pass. I'm not gonna go into everything about the JR Pass and how it works and what it's valid for. Really, that's a whole video in itself. I'm just gonna mention what's new. And remember, you only need a JR Pass if you're gonna be traveling long distance around Japan between cities, in which case it's excellent and can save you a lot of money. Now, you have two choices of where to buy the pass from. You can buy it direct from Japan Railways, which is new, or you can buy it from an over agent like before. If you buy direct from Japan Railways, it does cost slightly more, but you have the benefit of being able to make seat reservations online instead of having to go to the station and make your reservations at the counter or at a ticket machine. Although you do still have to go to the station to pick up your seat reservation cards. Potentially, this could save you time because it does get quite busy at the counter sometimes when there's a queue. The new system, Vine Direct, is also a bit quicker if you're buying your pass last minute because if you buy from an overseas agent, they post an exchange order to you, so you have to allow time for that to arrive in the mail. And if you buy direct from Japan Railways, they email it to you, so it's quicker. I'll be trying out the new system direct from Japan Railways when I go to Japan soon, so I'll let you know how it goes and how it works making seat reservations online. It can be tricky to know which site to get your JR pass from because there's so many different agents and sometimes people ask me which ones are genuine. Previously, I always got my pass from japanrailpass.co.uk. That's now part of Japan Experience, so I don't know if it's still the same company or if the service is still the same, but they were always really Really good. If you want to buy your pass direct from Japan Railways, the official site is japanrailpass.net. Here's what it looks like. Another new thing is you can now use your JR Pass to go through the automatic ticket gates at the station instead of having to go to the side and show it to a person who lets you through. This should be quicker and easier. You just insert your pass and go on through. Make sure it's your actual Japan Rail Pass and not your seat reservation card because that one won't work in the gates. And also don't forget to pick up your pass as you go through the ticket gates. That little bit of card is very valuable and you don't want to forget it. 
Also, sometimes some of the ticket gates are IC card only. They're only for IC cards like Suica and Passmo. So JR passes won't work on those ones. It usually says on the front of the gates. There's also a change about luggage on the Shinkansen, the bullet train. If you have oversized baggage, or if you wanna use that handy space behind the end seats at the end of the carriage, now you have to make a reservation. Just reserve the seats at the end of the carriage and it's yours to use. If you have a JR pass, it's just like making any other seat reservation and it doesn't cost any extra. If you have a bike or a wheelchair or a pram or stroller, they don't count as oversized baggage, so you don't need a reservation for them. You probably don't need to worry about whether your suitcase is oversized because if it's within the size limits for most airlines, it's probably fine. If you wanna check, just add together the length, width and height. And if it's 160 centimeters or less, you don't need a reservation. Otherwise, you can just put your suitcase by your knees. The bullet train is quite spacious or you can put it on the overhead luggage rack. Next, Hyperdia has been discontinued and won't be updated anymore. It was a really useful app for train times, routes and prices in Japan. The good news is there are alternatives. They take a bit of getting used to if you're used to Hyperdia, but they offer all the same functionality. The one I'm using is NaviTime. It's a free app on Apple and Android. It's called Japan Travel by NaviTime. You can search routes, it tells you which lines to take, how long the journey is, the cost, and even which platform you need. You can just search for train routes on Google, but the benefit of using something like NaviTime is it has a filter for the Japan Rail Pass and other rail passes. So it'll only show you trains that are included in the pass, which is really useful, for example, if you're searching for bullet trains, it won't show you the Nozomi and other trains that aren't covered by the pass. Next, you do still need to take cash. Traditionally, Japan has always been a more cash-based society. Since 2020, more places do accept cards now, but some places still don't, like smaller independent shops and restaurants, snack kiosks and stalls. So you do still need to take a good amount of cash with you. Next, masks. Be prepared that you might need to wear a mask on your flight to Japan. Certainly the Japanese airlines, ANA and JAL, are asking everyone to wear masks when they're on the plane at the moment. And that includes code share flights. So for example, if you're flying with British Airways, they code share with JAL on their flights to Japan. So at the moment, they're asking everyone to wear masks when they're on board. It's not really the most appealing thing wearing a mask on a long haul flight, but that's what the rules are so check the guidelines from your airline. I'll definitely be looking for the most comfortable mask I can find. When you're in Japan it's not the law that you have to wear a mask but I've heard loads of times that most people are wearing masks in public especially in crowded busy places. So really if everyone else is wearing a mask it's a good idea to wear one as well just so you're not making other people feel uncomfortable. And if anyone has any recommendations for which masks are the most comfortable for wearing all day, please put them in the comments. Next, on to the new things and new places to go. I've been covering lots of new things that have opened up in my Japan news series. You can find that in the playlist and there's a new one coming up soon. So subscribe if you want to see that. It was kind of hard to know what to include here because everyone's interested in different things, but here's some highlights for you. First, the cherry blossom forecast for 2023 has just come out. Every year, the Japan Meteorological Company publishes a map showing when the cherry blossoms are expected to bloom in each part of the country. Because Japan is so long, the climate's quite different in different regions and they bloom earlier where it's warmer. This year, they're expected to bloom at an average time or just a few days late. I love the amount of information they provide on this. There's the date they're expected to start blooming, the date when they'll be at full bloom, and the difference between that and the average time. This chart is the blossom meter. They monitor the buds on the trees and update the chart as they grow and progress towards blooming. So keep an eye on that if you're hoping to catch the sakura this year. 
Remember, there are early and late blooming varieties. I saw all these in Osaka in mid-April, which is later than you might expect to see them in full bloom. And the cherry blossoms were early that year, so you never know. Next, international tickets are now available for the new studio Ghibli Park near Nagoya. You can now buy them from overseas in English. The park's in several sections and each area has separate tickets. Currently, international tickets are only available for one section Ghibli's Grand Warehouse. That one has a cinema with special short films, exhibitions and sets that you can go on. It says international tickets will be a gradual rollout which suggests that in the future we'll be able to buy tickets for the other areas as well. At the moment you have to book tickets in advance, you can't buy them on the door. They go on sale month by month so on the 10th of January tickets for February to March went on sale. If you want to go I recommend buying your tickets as soon as they go on sale in case they sell out because it's really popular. Another really popular new attraction is Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan in Osaka. If you want to go, as well as your Universal Studios ticket, you also need a timed entry ticket to Super Nintendo World, which is free, or you need to buy an express pass which guarantees you entry. If you want the free ticket, you need to get there early when the park opens and you can get it from a ticket machine or the app. If you don't manage to get one, there are standby tickets. So if anyone cancels their timed entry ticket, there's a lottery for who takes their place. You can also get that from a ticket machine or the app or you can just buy the Express Pass, which guarantees you'll get in. Next, Team Lab Borderless is an attraction that I'd recommend for anyone. I loved it. It's got lots of areas to explore with projection mapping, lights, music, lots of effects, and it's really stunning. It has now closed, but not forever. It's relocating to a new location in central Tokyo, where it's gonna open sometime in 2023. Until that opens, you can still go to Team Lab Planets, which is a similar sort of thing. It's smaller and it's a temporary exhibition. It's got some rooms the same as Team Lab Borderless and some that are different, including rooms where you walk through water with projections on the surface. That's in Toyosu, near the new Toyosu fish market, and it's open until the end of 2023. The same company, Team Lab, often has exhibitions and installations all around Japan, so look out for them too. There's Team Lab Forest in Fukuoka and Team Lab Botanical Garden in Osaka, which is outside, and both of them are permanent. Next, the world's largest anime store is opening on the 16th of March 2023. It's Animate in Ikebukuro, it looks huge. And the world's largest gachapon store is already open, also in Ikebukuro in Sunshine City Shopping Mall. It has 3,000 gachapon machines. They seem to be opening a lot more of these shops with just gachapon machines and nothing else, both around Tokyo and around the rest of Japan. If you want to find them, there's a chain called Gachapon Department Store and there's another chain called Sipla. And another world's largest is the world's largest conveyor belt sushi restaurant, which is open now. It's Kura Sushi near the Sky Tree. It really looks like they've redesigned the conveyor belt sushi experience and brought it up to date. And if you're not going near the Sky Tree, there's also new spacious branches of Kura Sushi in Harajuku and Asakusa. Next, if you are hoping to go to the Olympics in Tokyo, you can now go on a tour of the Olympic Stadium, which is probably the next Best thing. It's a self-guided tour and you can go in backstage areas and on the track. And finally, there's a new attraction called Small Worlds Tokyo with miniature cityscapes and dioramas. It looks really cute. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. So I've really zoomed through the highlights there. If you want more detail, my Japan news series is in a playlist on my channel and there's new Japan videos every other Thursday if you want to subscribe. I can't wait to film new travel vlogs for you really soon. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.